Today we are invited by Jesus to, to give some thought to whether the stuff that we have, our, our possessions, our belongings, the, the things of our life are idols or icons. Are they idols that interrupt our relationship with God? Or are they icons that spark joy and bring us into the divine life? That we have to contemplate this today. If you please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, number 397 in your hymnals. Now thank we all our God. <laughs> of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From page 356, the glory of justice. Glory, glory to God in Christ and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone. Continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. 
And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our lessons. Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Hosea, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to the Baals, and they burned incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness and ties of love. <clears throat> to them I was like one who lifts a little child to the chief, and I bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt, and will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? A sword will flash in their cities. It will devour their false prophets and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to run from me. Even though they call me God Most High, I will by no means exalt them. <clears throat> How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboiah? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man. The Holy One among you, I will not come against their cities. They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come from Egypt trembling like sparrows, from Assyria fluttering like doves. I will settle them in their homes. Homes declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can join me now in reading together Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He has Or uncircumcised, 
barbarian, <coughs> Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in any abundance of possessions. And he told him this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. <coughs> but God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Set your hearts on things above. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus drops a hint about the secret of life. Jesus, the one sent and anointed so that we might have redemption. <coughs> Jesus, Messiah, the one who came that we might have abundant life. This Jesus drops a hint about the secret of life. And this is what he says. It does not consist in the accumulation of stuff and the abundance of possessions. I think on an intellectual level, we, we all know that's true, right? And on a spiritual level, I think we all believe that. But on a practical level, don't we often act and behave as if it's not true? Yeah, uh, there's a show on, on, on Netflix uh, based on a series of books. And what I, I would, would call... Um, a life system. Tidying up with Marie Kondo. You ever heard of that? Yeah? Have you sat up? you seen the show? I, I, I've seen it a few episodes of the show. It's a show about a rather uh, tiny Japanese woman who helps people declutter their homes. She asks them to consider each possession. Each possession and ask the question, does it spark joy? One episode I watched, there was a woman who piled all her clothes on her bed. And she could, uh, she, she would go through them one by one, each piece of clothing. She was embarrassed by how many clothes she had. And as she thought about the reasons, she realized that she had bought many of them as a way of getting back at her husband. When, he was ang when she was angry with him. She was doing what, you know, what some people might refer to jokingly as retail therapy. <laughs> but she had ended up with a mountain of clothes. Some still with the tags on. 
clothes she, she didn't need or really want. And as she stood there looking at them, she realized she had a problem. Theologian and biblicist Catherine Reckless feels that Congo has touched on something truly profound. And she writes, quote, Since her book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, was published in 2014, Marie Kondo has ignited controversy and delight with her rigorous system of decluttering and organizing. But Kondo doesn't want merely to reorganize your closets. She wants to transform your soul. Watching her new Netflix show brings into full relief the missionary edge of her work. And it makes a strong case that most of us, indeed, need saving. Unquote. Now, uh, about halfway through the series, uh, a, a man uh, on the cusp of fatherhood sits in his garage surrounded by piles of stuff. He is supposed to be discerning between items that spark joy and those that don't. He reaches for a dented metal mailbox. You know the kind that hangs next to the, the front door. Explaining that it was originally on the front door he and, and his wife, of the first house that he and his wife had bought. He connects to what it means to him. Uh, or what it meant to him to buy that house, and to what the house meant to his parents, who are first-generation immigrants. It turns out he has a quite complicated attachment to an object he has never used and has no intention of using. So he turns to Kondo and says, what do you do with an object like this? And Kondo gently asks, so you have decided that this is an object you want to bring into your future. And immediately the man relaxes. No, he says. When you put it that way, I definitely don't need this in my future. He thanks the mailbox for its place in his life, and he sets it aside. That's a lot of emotional labor <laughs> connected to a mailbox. But as becomes clear in the series, as becomes clear in her books, the real work of this method is not really about organizing stuff, but about transforming our relationship to things. Transforming our relationship to things. This, I think, is also what Jesus had in mind when he said, life does not consist in the abundance of one's own, of one owns, one's possessions. But I think he might have been hinting at an even deeper problem. See, today's gospel lesson begins with a request from someone in the crowd. Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. We, we've heard about inheritance problems before from Jesus, haven't we? <laughs> Jesus stops, turns, and says to the man, Friend, what? Who made me judge or arbiter over you? In other words, no. I'm not going to tell your brother to divide the inheritance with you. That's not my job. But then he turns back to his disciples and says, Take care. Literally, Watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. As if it might sneak up on you from behind. Watch out. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Let me interrupt long enough to say you almost have to be in church to hear a message like that. You are not going to hear it out there in the world. You are not going to hear it on uh, the radio or uh, on television advertising. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> the economic imperative of our consumer culture is to encourage us to acquire more and more things. I was, uh, 
I was thinking uh, the other day when I was driving down South Florida Avenue, there were three construction projects, all of them storage units. <laughs> buy, 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 so we can rent storage units to keep our stuff in. But Jesus here wants to be countercultural, wants us to be countercultural. He, he wants. Uh, he wants to create a, a way in which He will fulfill our deepest desires and transform our lives for the better. Stuff won't do that. Take care. One's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. He might say it to, uh, to that woman on the mountain of clothes on her bed. How did this happen, she wonders. How did I end up with so many clothes, some of them hanging in my closet with a price tag still on them? Because you weren't watching out, Jesus might say. Because you weren't on your guard against every kind of greed. There's that word again, greed. It's one of the seven deadly sins, isn't it? And it's like its sister sin, gluttony. That you don't know when to quit. Even when your belly is full, the buttons are popping off your, your front shirt, you can't seem to push back from the table. And for this woman, even when her closets are bursting forth with clothes, she couldn't resist. She couldn't seem to quit buying, buying, and buying. Be on your guard. Watch out, Jesus says, against every kind of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then he tells the story about a rich man whose land produced abundantly. <laughs> I've, I've wondered about this parable before. Because I, what is this man's sin? <clears throat> he doesn't steal the abundant crops. He doesn't tear down someone else's barns. The parable begins with the simple and unprejudiced <laughs> announcement that the land of the rich man produced abundantly. The rains fell at just the right time. The sun warmed the fields. The fertile soil nourished the crops. Perhaps, as in one of Jesus' other parables, the seeds produced 30, 60, and 100 fold. The rich man may have marveled at the miracle of it and thanked God for the bounty of his provision. Is there anything wrong with that? I don't think so. But in the next section of the parable, we begin to see the problem. Because in the next section, the man wonders what he will do with all his abundance. <clears throat> Listen to the way Jesus tells the story. Listen especially for the first person pronoun. The rich man thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. Did, did you hear it? I, 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 my, my, my. That's why sometimes I, 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 I've seen this described as the, the parable of the poor rich man. Because he's got nobody to talk to. Marie Kondo isn't there to ask him if these things spark joy. Or if he wants to bring them into his future. The conversation recorded in this parable is a conversation between himself and himself. He thinks to himself, he talks to himself, and in the end he says to his soul, his self, You have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, and be merry. Watch out for every kind of greed, Jesus warns, because greed is the sin. And like all sin, it separates us from God and from one another. And that's why Jesus is so insistent when he says, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Suppose the rich man hadn't been so greedy. Suppose that when his land produced abundantly, he had been able to <coughs> fold his hands in prayer and thank God for his goodness. Suppose that he had said, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, and who has brought forth so much grain from my land that I don't know what to do with it all. What would you do with it, Lord? What would you have me do with it? At least he wouldn't be talking to himself then. 
Or suppose that he was married and he had been able to say to his wife, what, what should we do for we have no place to store our crops? Maybe she would have said to him, well, let's share some of our abundance. Maybe with our children, maybe with our neighbors. God has been good to us. Why shouldn't we be good to others? But he didn't ask his wife. If he had one, she doesn't show up in the story. If he had children or neighbors, they don't show up in the story. It is only this man alone in his big, <laughs> empty house with his newly built barns talking to himself. And that's why I think that when God finally speaks to him, he speaks to him out of pity, not anger. Listen to it. You fool. You, you poor fool. This very night, your life is being taken from you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? It's not that God strikes him dead because he's greedy. It's just that life eventually comes to an end for all of us. And this man's life comes to an end on the same night he is toasting his good fortune. You poor fool, God says. Because this man doesn't have anybody to share his life with. He doesn't have anybody to share his things with. He raises a glass and proposes a toast to himself. To his own lonely soul. The poor rich man. Holed up in his house all by himself. Drinking a toast to his own soul. I wonder what would have happened if he had been able to throw open the gates of his house. Throw open the doors of his barns and say to his neighbors, Hey, come and get what you need. Come and share what I have. There's plenty. The story would have had a different ending, I think. And even if he had died that same very night, don't you think he would have died happy? For life does not consist in the abundance of one's possessions. Jesus said, he might have said it this way, it's not about how much stuff you have, but about how much love you share. That's what really sparks joy. That, I think, is the secret of life. Amen. 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 Standing. Page 358 in your books of common prayer, let us profess the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father.
community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. Especially those in our prayerless and the suffering people of the world. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For those serving in the armed forces, those wounded or recovering in veterans' hospitals, those serving in combat, and those serving in safety. For the peace and protection of God. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, our bishop, David, Rob, and Doug, our clergy, and for and all for bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For blessings upon all those expecting. For healthy babies and safe deliveries. For our schools, scouts, and all the children and youth of our parish. For your grace and their ever-growing knowledge and love of you. For our parish family. For I For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all our family and friends, especially those of St. Stephen's. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Thank you for our family and our church family. We pray
rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Um, we have uh, decided to return to our uh, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock schedule uh, this Sunday after Memorial Day. I'm sorry, Labor Day. Thank you. Sooner or later, yeah. Sunday after Labor Day. So that will be September 11th. Okay, we'll, be our, we'll return to our uh, schedule uh, 9 and 11. And of course, that is the second Sunday. And so we will have breakfast that morning uh, as well. So again, mark your calendars. The 9 o'clock, of course, will we'll be in here. Uh, and then uh, the 11 o'clock in the Worship Center. Again, beginning September 11th. There is a... A lunch prepared for you today, so please join us uh, in the uh, worships or in the parish hall for lunch today, provided by the daughters of the king. So thank you for lunch this morning. Uh, again, immediately following service. Um, on the eleventh, there will not be Sunday school or those things. We will start that the week after. Yeah. So yeah, we'll start Sunday school for children and adults uh, on, on on the eighteenth of September, the week after. Am I missing anything? Oh, we do have a verse of the week. Oh, uh, yes. There is no spaghetti supper, right? No spaghetti dinner this month, no. Yeah. Yeah, we will resume that hopefully in, um, in September. Um, that's going to be, of course, up to Karen. Uh, hopefully we will resume our spaghetti suppers in September. So no, no spaghetti dinner this coming Tuesday. We do have a verse of the week. Come join with me, please. Colossians 3 1. If you have been raised with Christ, see the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
pray. Eternal God, <coughs> Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two anniversaries this week, uh, Dennis and John Flynn. Happy anniversary, Dennis. Thank you. And uh, David and Lula Peoples. Hmm. Birthdays this week, John LeBond, uh, Roger, Roger Doyle, and Jan Benware. Happy birthday. If you please play with me our first birthday blessing. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you. Amen. <coughs>
how are you? Marsha. Marsha. Some of the notes. 